Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with The Legend of Korra, book 4, episode number 11 and 12 reaction. Okay, the previous two episodes, um, a few things happened. Number one, Korra has been uh, properly healed, even mentally. Uh, she had to basically face her uh, self and she had to accept the fact that yeah like you know like these has happened and she has to accept her loss which was done after she was able to go and meet Zahir again Zahir has been imprisoned but after going and meeting him again and Zahir realizing that Kuvira is someone who he never wanted to be at that uh, like you know as a leader he, he, he decided to help Korra out and he like you know kind of helped her out to get out of that mental situation and uh, taught her how to accept and you know like that's how Korra was able to uh, you know accept the fact that yeah like you know that was a loss I will uh, improve from here on I will become more uh, braver and more stronger and uh, yeah that's how he was she was able to stop running away and accepted herself so that's how the whole situation got resolved Korra is properly even mentally and physically healed now and uh, yeah that was a good thing that happened uh, other than that uh, a, a few things happened as well uh, for example the whole thing with Jinora getting captured by the spirit vines all that stuff you know and also um, Opal and uh, oh, Bolin came back you know uh, Raiko has decided to like you know make like to bring a meeting and everything like you know to talk about the situation all of that and uh, Opal and Bolin's uh, relationship were kind of looking a little bit dicey, you know. But by the end, Bolin decided to help Opal out to uh, bring back her family. That was episode number 9. Episode number 10, we uh, go into the rescue mission. Toph comes to help her family out. And uh, yeah, we help out both the sisters, break them out of their place, like, you know. Uh, stuff happens and we can kind of see how Lin has like you know like some bitter um, what do you call it like some grievances against Toph and how Toph is also like you know stubborn so yeah like they had a little bit of a misunderstanding a quarrel a little bit of a quarrel but other than that you know like they are able to break their family out uh, on the other hand, uh, the Kuvira was testing the missile, the, the, the whatever it's called, the spirit fine missile or whatever, or beam. And uh, we got to see, which I'm pretty sure everyone realized, uh, that Julie was actually trying to sabotage them. She has not betrayed us. And after getting to know that, she was almost killed, but thankfully Bolin and everyone was there. They helped her out. And uh, yeah we are okay for the time being because julie says that kuvira is going to attack so let's see what happens in this two episodes we are almost at the end and uh, yeah let's see so uh, i'll be putting the subtitles on the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started all right so this is episode number 11 so here's the countdown three two one go Hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Make sense. Two weeks, yeah, that's, I don't think that's enough for a mecha suit. <laughs> oh my god, here we go. Hmm, are you sure about that? <laughs> Oh boy. Oh, stole. Come on. What? Hmm. 
like the you know this is what's wrong with like you know I, i'll talk about this later damn okay i guess she just really does like him i i i had a, like a suspicion that maybe she's just using him maybe not i don't know Eighteen. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Ah. Okay. Makes sense. Oh, they're back. <laughs> yes. We went on a secret mission. Spirit weapon. <laughs> yeah. She never, yeah. She was successful, uh, kind of. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Hmm. All right then. Oh, is this Varys? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Julie's back. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, and Julie also kind of needs to explain. Yeah. I don't think she said anything that terrible. She she just complained about cleaning his feet. <laughs> That's true. Hmm. Oh. I knew this was going to happen. Oh. There you go. I, <laughs> Varric, you need some lessons in <laughs> dealing with that. <laughs> oh. mm. Oh, everyone's calling. Oh my god. Yeah, there you go. Oh god. Um... <laughs> Oh my god, come on, please. Okay. Okay, he, he might be able to do this. <laughs> there you go, that's more like it. Hmm. <laughs> Ah! There you go. <laughs> we kept him. <laughs> there you go. Good job. Spoken like a true king. Or a leader, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. Wait, what? 
No. We're ev evacuating for a reason. Wait, uh, they're in the Republic City or is this? This is Republic City, okay. Oh, I guess they are airbenders, okay, they can help. But at least Pema... I don't know. <laughs> mm, I guess Pema can also help. But she, she's like a regular citizen, you know, that's why I was just like... All right. This is, this is, I, but that was Iroh, wasn't it? Yeah. All right. Two weeks time. Oh boy. Oh Lord, look at this. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, that might be. No, but. Yeah. Hmm, okay. All right. Okay, then secret sabotaging mission. Here we go. I'm pretty sure they're anticipating uh, someone to come and do this, like the sabotaging. So I'm pretty sure Kuvira will be ready. Wait, what? Oh, Kuvira realized that Julie knows. That's why she decided to quicken the... Oh my... Is that the thing? Oh my god. Um... Oh god, no. Oh no. Oh god. This is bad. Oh, here we go. Hmm. No. Oh yeah, that's true. Oh. Oh yeah, we saw it was in the ro robot. Okay, never mind. <laughs> what am I even saying? There you go. Did they like? Oh, yeah. Yeah, when was he even? <laughs> Flying by, son. Yep. Wait, is that how you operate it? Oh, he metal bended. Sorry. I'm, I'm like, for a moment, I was like, how did she do that? She can metal bend. <laughs> oh, no. Dodge. Yeah. Uh. Oh, my God. This thing is fast. Hmm. Yeah, this is not good. Hmm. Okay. Well, this is not good. Yeah, there you go. That's what I said. Like. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Oh my god. Okay. Oh no. 
Oh, all the airbenders are there. Ah, oh, who, who is kind of okay? Yeah, evacuating as well. All right, so um, here we go. Like, if you go close to this thing, I, I guess the foot soldiers and the other army soldiers can attack. I was going to say, if you go closer to that thing, then it won't be able to attack you. So you can just sneak in and sabotage or something. Well, it won't work that easily, I guess. As I said, the foot soldiers are there. God damn, this thing is so tall. Yo, I was sweating. My God. Well, what? Yeah. She won't. She won't. Oh my god. Ah. Uh. Oh no! Okay, well. Oh my god. Uh, oh. Yeah. Oh boy. Wait. Yeah, this is why we needed the airbenders. What? Three seconds! Oh my god. Oh no. God damn. Yeah. Oh, God. So what do we do now? Cripple it. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, but how can you? Okay. But oh boy. Okay. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, that was the reason why they left him. <laughs> Makes sense, you know. He'll probably just fart and give his location away or something. <laughs> oh god, alright. Damn, dancing in that wingsuit. Okay. Nice. Ooh, a stealth mission. Give a little neck jump. <laughs> I guess it doesn't work like that always. <laughs> Knock people unconscious. Okay. Nice. Yep, you're... <laughs> Yo. <laughs> I feel bad for me, it's just... Oh. 
Wow, they actually was able to do it successfully. My God. Well. Yeah. Uh, I feel bad for Sue because this is. Oh, wait. What the? Uh, because. Oh, boy. What? Oh, God. I was just saying this, like, Sue is here, so it's kind of difficult to, like, you know. Hello there. Do they know that Batar has been kidnapped? Wait, wait, what? Oh, but yeah, Batar is not here, okay. <laughs> Look at them just playing innocent. Yeah, but if she's not here, then... Um... Hmm. Uh, he probably wants to be acknowledged, like that's the thing, you know. Oh, oh, wait, maybe not. Oh my god. It is costing lives. What are you even saying? What the hell? Oh my god. And uh, that face doesn't... Okay, you know what? Go slap him. This guy. Like, can't we... Oh, maybe fair. Spiritually, like... Wait, what? How? Oh! Well, she can! She's the Avatar! Now, the question here is, will Kuvira listen? Here, the biggest... Well, but Tars is not here. <laughs> oh God! Ah, uh, yeah. Yep. Here we go. The biggest. Now I'll get my answer if she really likes, loves him or not. Uh, let's see, come on. You're lying, I feel like. She's lying. God damn. Oh my, wait, he's there, what? 
What? What? Butter is the. Oh my god. What? Oh my god. Wow. You see, Batar Jr., now what do you have to say? There you go. I think I have my answer. What a... Wow. Well, I kind of knew that she probably is just doing it for, you know the power and everything and she doesn't care about Batar but there you go I guess I have my answer now like the way she just lied like that and then just attacked well I, I, I wonder what Batar will say now like he's not coming back I, I'm pretty sure after this whole like you know this display uh, Batar will probably not go back to Kavira anymore most probably like yeah I don't know. We'll see. Oh, like, great. Like, you do something for someone, like, you know, like, just left his family, left, you know, his loved ones for one person, and this girl just betrays him like that. What, what an amazing show of loyalty. I don't know. I, I, I kind of thought maybe Kuvia really does, like, you know, like him and does kind of you know appreciate him and adores him something but maybe not I, I was probably wrong anyways um we begin this episode with Kuvira just um okay Kuvira like you know just uh giving her speech about how she's going to capture uh, the empire uh, the earth empire and you know, there was that scene with Batar where she's like, oh, like, you know, I'm so honored that you're here with me, this and that. And uh, but I was like, also like, yeah, you know, let's rule over our empire together, blah, blah, blah. And like, I, I really thought that maybe, maybe she really does like him, you know, like I, I, this came to my mind before that maybe she's just using Batar just for, you know, like for her for his like you know help and everything and he's he's like you know whatever you say he is a good inventor because he did make that huge mecha thing you know so because of his skills and everything probably Kuvira was keeping him with her and uh, if a choice comes in the future where he she will need to choose between Batar and the earth empire she probably just do that now you know what pisses me off it doesn't piss me off that she chose the earth empire of our batar it pissed me off that she lied not only that she decided to attack them that's what pissing me off about this whole situation like she could have just been like you know what no i choose the earth empire which i built up up until now over you if she just said that and you know decided to just cut all ties and try to conquer the like you know like republic city like that if that was how it went, I would have been like, you know what? Okay, I guess, because like it's not okay, but still, you know, like at least she would say that, yeah, this, this, I, I, like, I'm choosing this and like, you know, made it clear cut that, yeah, like, you know, I'm choosing the Earth Empire over you. And uh, because, you know, this is Kuvira we are talking about. I was like 70, 80% sure that if a choice comes, she'll probably choose the Earth Empire. That's one thing that was that was very um, much confirmed. I would have been actually surprised if she chose Batar over the Earth Empire because that's not how I envision Kuvira to be. The way I'm seeing her and everything, seeing the way she, her personality and everything, she's not that type of a person. So it it wouldn't be a surprise, and I wouldn't even be that much pissed off about this situation. What pisses me off is that. Not only did she lie by just saying uh, that, oh yeah, definitely, like, I'm going to choose you over the Earth Empire. Just lied like that in front of him, number one. And what pisses me off even more is she decided to use the Spirit Cannon to attack that place where Batar was. So she just tried to kill him off. And, as, and obviously because she doesn't need him anymore now. 
she the the robot uh the, the the mecha thing is there because that's that's what i'm mad about like why so yeah like her choosing the earth empire okay i i i kind of accept expected that but not this you know like not the thing that she did after that either way so <sighs> No, now we begin uh, the episode with, uh, you know, that whole speech, Kuvira, Bata, that all that happening. And then um, <clears throat> everyone is, you know, they, they, they were like having a conversation. Bolin and everyone comes back with um, Su and Zhu Li. And they talk about how they were able to break Zhu Li out, uh, not Zhu Li, sorry, uh, Su and her family out and how Bolin went there and all that stuff they explained to them um now <clears throat> julie obviously explains how she was there for sabotaging the project and she wanted to you know like kind of make use of her position over there to uh take advantage of that situation but unfortunately she failed and uh, yeah all that over we now go to Varric, and Varric is obviously making these hummingbird suits or whatever they're called. And uh, Julie comes in, and <laughs> God damn. Now we we know that Varric has changed. You know, he 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 was he was never a bad person. I would say he was kind of like a person who just didn't realize what he was doing wrong or something like that. Like he realized, but he never like you know it never dawned on him. That, oh these things that i'm doing are not okay you know like for example just you know kind of like tricking others <laughs> and you know like taking advantage of others and like you know like like he, he's a businessman not a you know like a not a ruler of the world or something like that so as soon as he realized that you know like my power has is being used for something that could actually jeopardize the uh, fate of the entire world he decided to back out and he realized that yeah this is not for me so he he realizes that now and after like you know not only that and after julie went away he realized the importance of julie and how he just took her for granted and all that so he realizes all of that so we can see when julie come and comes and julie says that oh like you know my only like you know uh, intention was to help you out and i'm sorry if i hurt you all that she said no at the, at the beginning <laughs> Varric was like, oh, Julie. And then, as always, you know, he's awkward. He just tries to kind of act tough again. And he's like, okay, you can, you know, <laughs> be my assistant again anymore. Uh, like, you know, like, just start with the... What did he say? Uh, ah, apology accepted. Now, be a good assistant and man the assembly. There you go. <laughs> like, that's how he says. Like, and he probably realized that, oh, my God, this is... like. <laughs> I cannot continue, like, you know, like this. So he decided to just go back to that type of a persona. Obviously, Julie is not having it. And Julie is like, like, God damn, like, you know, I'm an equal to you now. And like, you, you need to treat me like that. You know, you can't treat me just like you did always. And unless and until you do that, I am not listening to you. And just leaves. <laughs> and Bolin is just face mommy. <laughs> I remember that day. When uh, Varric tried to give some advice, especially about these type of situation, these type of you know, <laughs> situations about uh, like you know to bowl in, and I remember that day. Now I'm 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 looking at this whole scene and I'm like, what the hell, <laughs> Varric? You need lessons more than bowling. Ah, <laughs> oh, God. Anyways, um, that was that. Now next we get to that part where Marco tries to inform everyone about the mandatory evacuation uh, evacuation and Marco cannot explain properly you know like he, he gives like he's giving out all the orders you do this you, you you're going to meet here this these people will be there you know they will take you to that place this and that like it just or, like you know just giving like a like an order like a like a like a like what do you call it like a, in a very systematic way, he's just giving and barking out orders. No one's understanding the, like, you know, the civilians. No one's understanding what the hell he's saying and everyone's getting confused. They're just phone calling and trying to figure out what's happening. Obviously, a lot of people are scared, panicked. So, 
Wu is like, let me handle this. Now, I can understand how Wu was able to handle this so easily because he was, like, you know, he's, he's a king, for God's sake. So he can and he has actually learned or has the knowledge about how to deal with these type of situations because he is supposed to be like a good speaker. Like, you know, kings and leaders are good speakers. Uh, while Marco is just a police officer, like he, he cannot do it as good as Wu would be able to. So Wu starts with a very nice, like, you know, kind of a greeting. And he says, kind of just talks about how the people in Republic cities are not losers. We are winners. This and that kind of smooths in into the whole situation, like kind of smooths uh, the way he kind of talked about it. And then very lightly and very... Um, calmly and uh, not not instilling fear and panic in the people he explained how they need to evacuate and how they are going to help everyone out and uh, he, he said like I know you like every person grab the other person that you see and go to that place and in a very nice way he explained the situation and yeah the confusion is over <laughs> Lin is like damn you can actually do it properly <laughs> Uh, now that was that now next we get to uh, to the like you know to Pema and the other airbenders and um Tenzin tells them to evacuate but I I thought I thought like maybe Pema was going to evacuate or something you know because she's like a normal civilian kind of but you know like but then she was also like no I'm also going to help and obviously we need the airbenders especially now because you know, like the evacuation and everything, airbenders are needed. So all the, like, you know, the kids and everyone, all the airbenders, they are very crucial to this evacuation. Either way, everyone's just, like, you know, kind of getting ready. Now, here, Cora comes and uh, talks with Raikou and everyone and talks about how they need a separate plan of actually going and sabotaging the... Uh, spirit weapon now they have no idea what's going to happen so they talk about how the spirit weapon is probably going to come on the train tracks and they assume that's how this is going to go obviously because before we saw like they had like a huge train with the spirit uh, like you know the weapon on it so that's how it was supposed to go it was actually uh, what can I say like kind of weird that we never even thought about that Kuvira could actually change the plan I guess never people like you know even I did not realize that Kuvira would actually change the plan because they have two weeks time they didn't have much time so I think they I thought that Kuvira is going to go along with the plan you know two weeks they're going to attack all that but Kuvira was a better I guess he she was able to see the situation even better kind of for, like you know was able to make a take a better decision and decided to uh, like you know quicken the process not two weeks but one week within one week they were here and i don't know where she had the mecca that they made but she had that ready and used that to transport the spirit weapon now like that was probably it. like I, I never thought that they would do do something like change the plan at the last moment because there was not enough time but they were able to pull it off that's why no one except expected the weapon to come on like a huge mecca like who even thinks of it and not only that you know they quickened the process like they they came within one week because we knew that julie would leak everything they needed to change the plan and they did it properly so within one week um yeah kuvira's huge mecha spirit weapon whatever is already here and he tries to shoot down um uh, Korra and uh, their flying bison and almost like you know like that was kind of crazy the way kuvira like you know did it kind of metal bending the <laughs> the inner controls and using that thing so uh, Korra somehow is able to get out of that dodge the blast and go and warn everyone around the republic city warn raiko and everyone about that how they are here already and uh, yeah so everyone's ready there the huge mecha comes and raiko calls uh, kuvira and starts like you know, kind of says like oh surrender and I, <laughs> i'm like mm -hmm. obviously she's not going to do that but 
you know like obviously Raikou needs to kind of make a like not do a big like a tough front he's a leader that's why now Kuvir obviously kind of gives them a little demonstration just shoots the one, one or two bolts and seeing that Raikou realizes that nah nothing I can do about it so he's like all right I'm going to surrender right Republic City so they come up with uh, Kuvir says that all right I'm going to send Batar to your location and he's going to talk about the Turks and all that and uh, hand over Korra and, uh, and, uh, like, you know, and, and the others all that she, she said <coughs> Korra tries to go like, you know, kind of go back to the city and kind of uh, like, you know, come up with a different plan so they go to Julie and uh, Varric tries to come up with a plan, a potential plan to do something. So what plan they come up with is that the only person that will know what you can do about this mecha thing is Batar Jr. So because he's the one who made this. So we need to kidnap him, bring him here and uh, make him talk. That's how we're able to, we will be able to like, you know, do something about this situation. So they uh, make like a stealth team goes in and that was a very quick mission I have to say and it was very successful I did not expect it would go that easy they just dropped in grabbed Batar <laughs> just <laughs> went back <laughs> that quickly and uh, there you go we have Batar with us obviously Batar is not happy and now here in this situation I was thinking that how are they even going to make him talk because Sue is there they cannot torture him like obviously not he's he's you know she's her his mom so i was thinking maybe she, uh, Cora can do something like using her spirit power or something i don't know like something like that i thought maybe she can do something but turns out she had like a better idea okay before that uh sue talks with batar and asks him why is he doing this now i always thought that batar is doing this just to get acknowledged because i saw how he always get pissed off at you know her his mom and his dad like you know just calling him like batar jr and he, i think i like that's how i came to the conclusion that he doesn't like the fact that uh mom and dad doesn't look at him as an actual person with an individual personality they just think that he's still a child maybe maybe because of that he like you know like guvier probably said something like oh like you know like your mom and dad doesn't understand how good of a person you are you know they cannot acknowledge you enough so come with me i'm going to show you you know like you know like show you a different world or something like that i guess i, I thought that that's how it went you know because it seemed he had a lot of family problems with you know her, his mom and his dad like probably some inferiority complex or something so i thought it was something like that like you know what i i still think he has like an inferiority complex because you see how the other children are you know like how um the other two and uh, all of them can like you know met, uh, metal bend and like you know fight and everything i've not seen batar fight before you know so maybe he's not some maybe because of that he's probably has an inferiority complex and like you know the pressure of being the eldest child and all that like you know these type of family situations that's why he went with kuvira because kuvira just like you know used some probably sweet words to just bring him to his her side so i thought that was the case but the one thing that bata says here is kind of interesting he says that oh like you know the earth kingdom was always ours like you know the uh, ang and um what's his name uh, zuko stole it or something like that he says which is really crazy about like you know this is a thing that kind of it's so weird you know <clears throat> when Aang and uh, Zuko was there when the whole fire nation attacked that thing was happening Batar and Kuvira wasn't even born how dare they talk about a situation that happened so many years ago when they were not even present they're talking about how they stole the earth kingdom like did they know what Aang and Zuko went through at that moment you know how they came to the decision of making this like a united republic i'm pretty sure they're this making this like a republic city a united thing 
it it i'm pretty sure there is a lot of bad things also that uh, kind of came with this again okay? things have two sides good side and the bad side they made like a united province which has a lot of good sides also there's a lot of bad sides as well i'm i'm sure of it and i i don't deny it still the fact that they are actually complaining about a situation where they not even were not even born i that's what kind of makes me mad because like, how how can they how how what 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 type of a, who who gave them that permission to say something like oh they stole it when they weren't even there at that moment they weren't even born at that moment zuko and ang did the best that they could do they came to a decision and they did what they thought was best for the people as i said there are good things that happened because of that are probably a lot of bad things as well but that does not give them these two the right to judge them who who were a lot like you know like came a lot before them they, they weren't even born when ang and zuko took the decision most probably so that's what i'm angry about like they they just said like oh like you know these two stole like what like you know what was happening then the fire nation had like a had was in war with everyone you know everyone was fighting united against the fire lord and all that stuff happened ang went through so much and you're just saying that oh they st uh, yeah either way you know like that's one thing that i did not like about their argument about how the ang and zuko apparently stole earth kingdom from you know like the whole thing. so yeah either way uh, that that was like a thing and i'm like wow so batar junior motivation also kind of lies in this as well he also thinks that oh uh, Earth Kingdom was ours, so why is it like this now? Like, so that was a surprise. I was not expecting him to say something like that because I thought his problem was mainly because of his inferiority complex or his like you know family troubles. But there's probably something else as well, like the thing he said. Either way, you know, like, but I'm pretty sure majority of the reason for him just going with Kuvira is because Kuvira just used some, you know, like just kind of cajoled him i think that's the word <laughs> to join her and probably just said some good things about him and said how your mom and dad doesn't appreciate you enough you are so much more deserving than the respect that they gave you or something like that i'm pretty sure she said so she said something like oh come with me we'll rule the earth kingdom or something like that she said and that's why she he probably went and joined her so there you go now <sighs> Cora comes up with a brilliant plan. She says that, you know what, the person who you love the most is Kuvira here. So what I'm going to do is not let you see Kuvira at all. Whenever I'll go, I'll bring you with me. And I'm the avatar. I can just fly away. <laughs> she did not say that, but I'm just saying. You know, so yeah, like, you know, you're never going to be able to see Kuvira. You know, like your dream and everything is going to just go. Like, you know, and I, I'm not going to let it get fulfilled. But you're coming with me everywhere I go. Kuvira won't even see you again. So there you go. Make your choice. Now, here I knew here a big choice will have to be made. I was thinking, like, what's Kuvira going to do? This is the type of a situation where choosing Batar would mean giving up Earth Kingdom. And that's what I was talking about at the beginning of the discussion, you know. What pissed me off here is obviously Batar really loves Kuvira and the question here was does Kuvira does the same I was sure that yeah she kind of you know like is uh, does like uh, Batar but I was not expecting like I expected her to not choose Batar you know as I said like you know, I would have been surprised if he actually chose Batar and gave up the Earth Kingdom I was expecting her to choose the earth king what i was not expecting is her lying because you know at that moment when she lied she was like okay so you're right you know like i will not be able to uh like you know like our earth kingdom means nothing if i cannot see you something like that she says and while all of them are like the others are trying to pinpoint the location where batar is you know she says that i was so surprised i was like wait a minute she's saying this i don't believe it She's actually choosing Bazaar over the Earth Kingdom. You know, that's why I said, like, and I expected her to choose the Earth Kingdom. So I was so surprised at that moment. 
And then it dawned on me what she did. She actually was buying time for them to find out the location. She lied like that and just shot towards them. This part makes angers me. You know, like she not only she lied, but she also attacked them because I'm pretty sure she attacked them because she knows that Batar has no use now. She has the mecha weapon, the spirit weapon. Batar is no more needed. So just, you know, like if she, he, he's like in a hostage situation, just blow them all up. Who cares? Something like that. Like that's the type of a approach she took, I'm guessing. So I'm actually kind of interested to see what is going to happen after this. Because what is Batar going to do now? Like her, his trust is gone. Probably, hopefully, like you know, he, he won't trust Ruvira anymore. So, is, she, is he going to help us? Or maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. But, I don't know. I was not expecting her to just attack them like that. Like, in the end, we see, you know, after shooting them, Kuvira kind of sighs, kind of takes a deep breath, and just, yeah. I don't know, man. Like, uh, anyways, uh, let's start the next episode. Uh, this is episode number twelve. Yeah, episode number twelve of uh, book four. All right, so let us start. Just a sec, guys. All right, I'll be putting the subtitles and the time here. Sync it to whichever is a preference, and let's get started. All right, this is episode number 12. Here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, Day of the Col Colossus. Oh my god. The aftermath, I'm guessing. Nice. <laughs> Just spending agenda. Oh boy, Batar has been injured. All right, move. He's going to shoot again or something. Oh no. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Oh, that's, uh, oh, okay. All right. Okay. Why are you screaming at what the? <laughs> Great. What the? Oh no, everyone's panicking. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, poor guy. Um <laughs> That's a <laughs> That's convincing. Oh my god. Come on, Milo. Wait, what? Oh. Um okay. Uh, I don't know, maybe like paint the <laughs> Paint the screen so that Kubira cannot see. <laughs> I don't know what he's planning. Let's see. Oh, wait. Wait, are they really going to do that? Like paint the... Oh my God. Dodge. Yeah, oh my god. Uh Damn. Okay, so yeah, now she cannot attack. Oh, um, or maybe Ah, uh, but it's so. Okay, there you go. Are they going to Yeah, they're going to paint it. Okay, there you go. I knew it. Yes. So that she cannot see. I was correct. Now what are you going to do, Kuvira? <laughs> oh, wait. They even have a... Okay. Oh my god. So... Oh yeah, lava! Okay, lava, maybe... Will it work? I don't know. Yeah, it should work. Like, this is lava we are talking about. Like, thousands of degrees. Oh, maybe... Okay. Interesting. Are they already cleared up the windows? Oh, it's going to topple! They're going to topple it! The, the, the leg is attached in the same place. Yup! Nice! Oh my god! Ugh. Oh my god! Okay, come on! It's working. Nice. If it falls, it, it won't be. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, God damn. We almost got it. Okay, move. Oh. Oh, no. Oh my god. Uh, all that almost worked, but Oh god. Now what? Cut. Okay. The okay, it's working, I think. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. 
It's harder. Uh, yeah, okay. No. Oh, okay. Oh, wait, maybe... Well... Vera just shot at you, so... And now he realizes. God damn. Hmm. Ah, their family, you know. Yeah, they they will. Okay. I was just thinking. That's why he said to stop all the electric. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Ostrich horse. <laughs> Wait, what? What? Where is this going? Dang, I was just saying, you know. Oh. Um. Okay. Oh. Nice. There you go. It's working. Yes. What about the big one? I think the big one, it will not work on it. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, what? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh god. Um, yeah. Wait. Oh. Okay. I was not expecting him to come. Yeah. Yeah. What? Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Metal mosquito. Okay. Wait, who? <laughs> Wait, she's. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, okay, Herbert. Uh. Oh! Oh wait. Oh, I thought Kuvira attacked or something. <laughs> what? What a... <laughs> oh. I don't know. Ride them or something? There you go. Yeah, you, you have something else to say? It's working. <laughs> yep, they are underneath. Oh. 
Oh boy. Hmm. All right. Two moments, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, distracted or something, I don't know. Like, just enough time for the plasma sauce to get installed. Okay. All right, here we go. There you go, I have to stay, come on. God. Oh. Nice. Oh. All right, come on. <laughs> oh my god. Oh wait. Yes. That was nice. Good. That was good. Yeah, there you go. How about that? Wait. Milo, move! Milo! Okay. Um... God damn! Uh... A fart or something. <laughs> nice. Okay. Alright, lava bending or maybe earth bending. Earth bending, there you go. Yes, come on. Nice. Oh, oh. <laughs> yep. Nice, that was a good. Oh boy. <sighs> well, yeah, you're having fun, Kuvira. <laughs> <laughs> the grandma is like what where did they come from Damn. oh okay yeah, the badger moves are going to come. The badger moves are going to come and attack them or something, I feel like. There you go. There you go. No, they're coming to get you. They're going to get them from the behind. Or, or, or that, okay. Uh, there you go, uh, like I said. <laughs> uh, that was good. Hmm.
my god oh my god <laughs> well that was a happy ending <laughs> wow okay i was not expecting that in the middle of a Oh, but let, better late than never, I guess. Uh. Okay, well... Ah, here we are, the hummingbirds with... Not hummingbirds, the humming suit. Alright, come on! Oh, we need to protect them, okay. Oh, nice. Yes! <laughs> One I can never reach. The plasma saw, here we go. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, it's working. Haha, <laughs> it's working pretty well. <laughs> yes. Oh, whoa, nice. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay, she, okay, can, can you freeze the... <laughs> yeah? Nice! Okay, it's working. It really is working. Oh my god. Oh no. Oh my god. Oh, it's only... Oh my god. Oh no. Oh, yep, she's panicking now. Oh, move, move! Nice! Okay, here we go. Get in! Yes! Well, infiltration successful. 50% of the plan is over. The last 50%. Getting in and using the, the lever or whatever um, Batar said. Okay. Well, this was... I guess most of the plan was successful. Now, this episode we begin with... The whole place you know crumbling down and it could be obviously uh shoot it uh shot the beam the spirit beam at them and uh yeah everything's not looking good at all kuvira and his uh and her army is approaching them so okay now everyone comes at this like at one position they're thinking about what to do and uh, the evacuation is kind of a little bit not working out properly because people are panicked they don't know what to do they're kind of uh scared and uh, you know pema is trying to 
make the situation uh, better trying to calm them down but yeah they are like what are we going to do they're attacking you know like we can see kufi are coming and all that and it doesn't help that you know all the others the conductor and everyone they're coming and saying like oh i just saw kufira's mecca coming at you know in this direction and this and that so <laughs> wu comes in and wu is like all right stay calm and i'll be right back and uh, i'm going to get some help like <laughs> well like we did not know what help he was talking about but in by the end we know he was he went to get some badger moles which worked out really well by the end of it because the badger mole helps us out in a lot of ways now <clears throat> milo comes up with a brilliant idea which i think was probably a great way to distract them uh, uh distract the huge thing is take some paint paint put it in some um, balloons and throw them at the the window things you know like if it takes away their vision they cannot attack properly so that's like one of the most basic plans but it works out so well you know like like imagine this huge thing you know just not being like kind of being just i don't know like just being um of uh what do, what do you call that like overcoming this such a huge threat by just using balloons with paint like the the vision is gone the huge thing can't do anything but obviously the the, the robot the mecha thing had uh inbuilt washing thing you, you know the the thing that they used to wash off the paint that was there so but their initial goal of distracting the mecha worked out you know like they they decided to go and uh, you know like milo and everyone just went then and started throwing the balloons uh, it all covered the window and there was no way you know kuvira is getting that out in a, like you know in, in in a matter of seconds they needed a few minutes to just stand there and just make the water flow and clean the window using that as an opportunity um this this part was so close i have to say they were almost able to get the mecha but they weren't able to um the next part of the plan was bolin and the metal benders came they tied together the legs and the airbenders hit the um uh the mecha with the um, with air so that it topples over the leg is attached at the same place the body is getting toppled and that's how it if it falls once it will be kind of a lot i guess easier to control it or take control of it because you know the legs are attached with metal wires if the mecha falls over and it cannot move its legs it will be a little bit difficult you know to stand up again and this thing is huge so I feel like a lot this would have been a lot easier if they were actually able to topple the thing over but unfortunately it 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 kind of held its ground by the end of it did not fall over and uh, that's how you know like the whole plan kind of failed almost at the end and Kuvira just attacked them using the spirit weapon they were all fine but a lot of people got injured here and we decided to go back to the tower, the Future Industries tower. Here we can see uh, Varric, uh, Asami, and um, uh, Julie are making the humming mecha thing. And <laughs> the, the mecha things are not properly working. And uh, they're trying their best to make it uh, pliable. Now, Batar comes, you know, like, gains consciousness. And Batar talks about how, you know, like, obviously apologizes because like i said you know like he he probably realized that kuvira uh yeah just attacked him so you know like obviously he, he probably felt bad after that he, he talked to sue and said that yeah i'm sorry and he said like maybe my siblings won't be able to forgive me but they're your siblings you know they're a family it'll take time but they probably they definitely will by the end of it forgive you now <clears throat> uh Varric comes up with another good idea they decide to 
that not detonate but activate like an emp pulse to stop the smaller robots it won't work on the bigger one obviously so he starts doing the thing on the tower and here he talks about his ostrich horse <laughs> what was the name mrs eats <laughs> i love how when uh, Varric says something like, oh, you know what, Julie, I need to say something. Julie was like, oh, really? Like, I'm just so excited. And then she, when she starts talking about Mrs. Beaks, Julie's face is like, what? <laughs> but I feel like what Varric tried to do here, as, as he said, like, you know, I, I took um, my ostrich horse as granted. And that's what he was going to say, probably, that, oh, I also took you for granted, which I never should have done. And like, you know, like, you, after you went away, it actually struck me and I, it made me realize and, but the story wasn't able to be completed because these things started coming and Varric had to switch on the EMP pulse. The smaller ones, all of them just went down. Unfortunately, the bigger one has an external power or like a backup power or something. So nothing happened to it. Now, on the other side, um, Asami's dad is back. He you know, came back to just help uh, Asami and everyone out with the, what do you call them? Uh, with the uh, Mecca and come up with a better plan, how to, what to do about it. So, first thing, he says that you actually need to get in. So how do we get in? It's not metal. So he talks about how plasma sauce can actually cut this thing and you can get in and how he can attach a plasma saw to the hummingbird suit, a mecha suit. And they'll be able to make a big enough hole to get in and do the job. So it's kind of like mosquitoes as he says, but you know, as Vary said, like if you get a mosquito, I just slap it away. So how will that work? So what should we do at this moment? Attack as a swarm, you know, like a swarm of mosquitoes. Like if you like, can attack one, like the other one will get you. Something like that. And uh, that was the plan. A lot of hummingbird suits with the sauce and just take advantage of the confusion and just saw in that thing. That was their plan. And, uh, and Batar also kind of helped telling them what to do after getting in and all. So, okay, on the other hand, Pema is trying to, <laughs> as Pema said, he, she, she dealt with Milo, so all these people she can easily deal with, but for, for a certain amount of time, you know, she's talking about, like, you know, giving, like, you know, telling them some, <laughs> some, uh, like, you know, like, tales or something. So, while they were listening to that, in comes Wu with the badger moles, and he talks about how the badger moles loves his singing. So, <laughs> it's so funny that the badger moles actually listen to him when he's singing. And I feel like the main reason behind it is probably because he is the Earth King, isn't he? Like, I've seen like, you know, like a lot of sections where him being the Earth King actually really helps so much. Uh, for example, the badger moles, they actually listen to him. <laughs> Another thing is that um, probably... Um, uh, you know, like, yeah, badger moles are like, I think they said something like badger moles are like the original earthbenders in, in Avatar, you know, like Toph said something like that, I remember. So that's also why I guess they listen to uh, Wu, he, who is the Earth King. So anyways, Wu says like, okay, we are going to use the badger moles and get in, in like, you know, in, in the underground and evacuate like that. And the people were like, uh, one of those people were like, oh, why would we listen to you and this and that? But then when they see the spirit beings being like you know just attacked like the outside being just attacked by the beams he was like you know what okay <laughs> i think that's the best plan so kuvira gets to know that inside the future industries tower the emp pulse is coming from so she decides to go there and in the future industries tower they, they're coming up with a plan to what to do and Korra and all the others decide to uh, take, like, you know, just take, uh, distract the big thing for a moment so that the hummingbird suits are ready. Now, this distraction worked out so well. They worked, everyone worked so well, where 
you know like Korra used went to, to the, her avatar avatar state started distracting the thing throwing boulders at it while um uh what was that okay um when it tried to shoot the beam the airbenders came in and just whacked the beam towards the ground so that it did not hurt them not only that um oh here for a moment a, a kind of a, a little uh, kind of accident was almost going to happen where Iki and uh you know like uh tenzin almost went down but um not Iki, sorry, Jinora and um, uh, what's name? Tenzin. Iki came in and saved Jinora while Milo came and saved uh, Tenzin. So, while all of this was happening, the Earthbenders, they decided to topple a building on top of Kuvira's uh, huge mecha. And uh, not only that, um, you know, it, it kind of just stalled them a little bit but the big thing again just stood up but on the other hand uh Wu is using the badger moles to dig holes <laughs> some earth kingdom soldiers come in and they, they try to get them to like you know like Wu to come with them and tries to just you know like arrest them or whatever but Wu had a different plan which i knew that he was going to go in this direction because he said something like the badger moles only listened to him by his singing Obviously, the Earth uh, Kingdom uh, army doesn't know that. So when Wu started singing, they didn't realize that he was actually giving, uh, like, you know, telling the Badger Moles to go and attack them. So when the Badger Moles went away, they're like, haha, the Badger Moles is also got, uh, like, you know, <laughs> tired of your singing, so they ran away. But no, that was Wu probably asking them to attack these three. So the Badger Mole comes in and just attacks them, and there you go. <laughs> <laughs> crisis averted so we can see how Wu is changing you know little by little when we saw him, him in the episode when he was introduced he was that you know typical <laughs> you know rich boy that kind of but I, I like you know from the beginning I kind of realized that he is probably one of those characters because his personality is it's kind of funny you know and we can see that this is genuinely that he is ignorant about a lot of things. That's why he was acting like that. So after the realization hit him, he changed so much for the better. And we can see that like, like this, like, you know, like you can actually watch these people and actually realize what type of people are they. Uh, if you spend enough time with them, like one or two episodes, you are actually able to gauge their, like, you know, that what type of person they are. For example, as I said, like, you know, seeing Wu, I was able to realize that, oh, he's probably not that bad. While the Earth Queen, oh my god, she's like in a different league. Like, after seeing her, everyone was able to realize that this lady will be a very bad, you know, like, a, a, like a, one of the worst people in, in this series. And there you go, like, the Earth Queen was just bad, plain bad, while Wu, on the other hand, it's genuine, like, you know, he, he's just genuinely ignorant about the situations and everything. So, which we could realize after just watching him for a few moments. So I kind of knew that maybe Wu will get like a little character development in the future. And there you go. He, he has changed so much and he's just helping everyone out, like, you know, just working for every, all the people now. <clears throat> now, that was that. On the other hand, um, Asami and uh, her dad are just working on the humming suit and... Oh my god, like I realize now why they kind of showed that little their bonding scene because they're just going to kill him off after that. Like, you know, like that part where Asami kind of like, you know, like Asami and um, the, her, her dad was talking. And uh, yeah, that like I realize now that that bonding moment was just because they were going to later kill, kill uh, her dad. Oh my god, anyways. Um, Ah, one of the most crazy things happens here. <laughs> I I was not expecting <laughs> Vank to just come and just you know like propose like <laughs> how like that fast he just came in and he's like I need to attach this ring to your finger. <laughs> Julie Moon, will you do the thing? Oh my god, for the rest of our lives. Okay, that was. <laughs> 
Okay, that was that was really I I I honestly I was not expecting that. You know, like I thought they were just going to like you know just probably just confess or something. And he just straight up proposed. I'm like, wow. I guess that's <laughs> that's one way. And uh, there you go. <laughs> oh, that that was uh, that was that was crazy. Oh my god, who would have expected <laughs> this? Julie and Varric when they were introduced. You know, like them to, like, you know, like today and like, you know, looking at them when they were introduced, like, damn. <laughs> wow. Anyways, um, after that, we get in and the hummingbird suits are ready. They're just in, just scurrying around, just trying to, like, you know, use the <clears throat> plasma sauce to cut in the hole. And uh, there's so many of them that, you know, like, Asami, uh, not Asami, sorry. Uh, Kuvira cannot do anything with that huge thing and she's sweating she's like oh my god what's like you know what's happening get them off of me and not only that but Korra also uses the water to just freeze it for a moment and it gets gives them so much time to use the hummingbird suits to saw the thing Varric and uh, 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 Julie's uh, suit not suit but the mecha thing kind of gets destroyed but they have the evacuation thing ready so they get out while um everyone else is trying to just chip in little by little kind of sawing the whole thing and Hoover is like use the full power and here we see asami and her dad trying to saw the thing and oh my god here's where the whole thing happens you know um i guess i guess uh Kuvira's, uh not Kuvira, sorry Asami's dad had to stay in the suit, otherwise the saw, like, you know, it would not go through completely. He was saying, like, you know, I need a little bit more time and a little bit more time. So if he also evacuated alongside Asami, the, the, the cut would not be complete, I'm guessing, you know. So he, at least one person needed to stay there, I'm guessing. That's why he only evacuated out Asami, so that Asami could escape. And he has to be there to see the work being completed. Otherwise, if he also evacuated, I guess the, the sawing would not be complete and it, the plan would fail. So that's why he had to stay there. And, you know, nothing you can do about this situation. But, you know, Asami just got evacuated out while he was there. And, you know, the Kuvira's hand came down and just completely destroyed the thing. The hummingbird suit and, yeah, like... I, 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 he, he's probably dead. But the, the hole is there, you know, they were able to carve in the hole and all of them got in and the first part of the plan is successful. Kuvira is sweating and uh, now we're going to see what the you Kinokora know, and all of them are going to do, which is probably going to happen in the next episode, the final episode of, uh, you know, the legend of Korra. And uh, we're probably going to have a big fight between Korra and Kuvira. And this time, I'm pretty sure Korra can handle herself. She's not, you know, the previous battle that she, she had with Kuvira did not act or work pretty well because she had her mental stress and everything. But now she's okay. So we'll see. Either way, so that was it. That was my reaction to episode number... 11 and 12 of the legend of Korra book 4 if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed and comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know and i'll check them out so that's it guys thanks for watching i will see you guys next week with the final episode of the legend of Korra book 4 until then goodbye and have a nice day